and welcome to Power Bites. I am your host, Ivan Buckner. So today, we will talk about how to be prepared when the worst happens. With recent events that have occurred in Illinois and even last week in Houston, when these events occur, power supply is often interrupted. This can cause significant challenges for businesses in keeping their operations going. I think this topic is front of mind of our listeners. Chris Barth will join us and talk about how to be more prepared when disaster hits. Chris, can you give us an introduction? Yeah, I've been sure. Uh, Chris Barth here. I am the North America and Asia Pacific Sales Manager for Rental Power here at Caterpillar. So I appreciate the invite. I'm always open to having a discussion uh, regarding rental power when possible. Thanks, Chris. When we say being um, power prepared, what does that mean? Well, I think uh, when it comes to our customers, any interruption to critical utilities is going to have a major impact on their operations, especially when it comes to power. I mean, when the power goes down, customers definitely have a sense of urgency. They want the power back. They want it back fast. I think preparing for a power failure is a must for any business and putting together a comprehensive contingency plan is uh, essential. Man, that seems like a lot, but wouldn't it just be easier to call up a supplier when you're hearing a storm is coming? Isn't that just a little unnecessary to create a power plan? Honestly, that's what a lot of customers do. They see a storm coming and they call. Unfortunately, most don't even do that. They take a gamble. They don't call until after the storm has already passed and realize that they've been affected and need need help. Think about the situations where there are no warnings of an impending storm. What about flooding due to excessive rain? Or what about, say, tornadoes that give zero warning before creation? How about warnings or how much warning do customers get before an earthquake hits? You know, the reality is that the vast majority of natural disasters come with little to no warning. Um, In the aftermath of a natural disaster, everyone's asking for help. They're calling every supplier they can think of for equipment. Um, Being prepared with a contingency plan drastically reduces the response time of getting help on site, ensuring the right sizing of equipment uh, before, uh, before deployment, making sure the customer's operations are up and running quickly uh, as possible. So I did want to make one distinction here when we're talking about contingency planning. The most common misconception I hear when talking about contingency planning is that it's only needed for natural disasters or natural disaster planning. In actuality, contingency planning or being power prepared, it's uh, it's an es- essential process for any customer, regardless of, uh, of their geography. Unexpected interruptions to customers' power, uh, temperature control, compressed air utilities happen daily, uh, even outside the effects of natural disasters. So being prepared for all such scenarios I think is key. Yeah, I get that. Um, being power prepared is, is is a great thing. Let's look at it from another side. You know, what are the financial benefits for this? Um, what sort of savings can, you know, a business get by putting together agreement of fixed rates uh, for power disaster plans versus um, paying on the day that the, the disaster hits? Yeah, so I think when most customers go through the t- contingency planning process, they invite in their their supplier. They have discussions on on uh, the equipment needed, like you said, the transportation, the logistics. But they also do have those discussions about pre-negotiating prices as well. There's typically tiered rate structures based on demand of equipment, shift rates based on usage, uh, technician rates for setup and commissioning, all of which can be charged significantly higher in the aftermath of a natural disaster when we're thinking about the economics of supply and demand once once those take effect. So having those pre-negotiated prices, pre, pre-event discussions can mitigate some of those extra costs. Um, all the effects that have a financial impact can possibly be mitigated by a contingency plan that's already in place. Yeah, that's some, some savings that um, from a business standpoint you, you would you would get. But let's say I'm a business owner and you know I already know that I don't want my you know power interrupted. So I probably already have like a, a stationary generator set that's already on site. So why would I need a backup plan or a power plan um, for standby generator? Yeah, I mean that's a great question. I, uh, we we do get asked this uh, quite a bit. And when you think about stationary backup units or backup generators, those are 
those are great in uh, in times of unexpected outages, maybe on mechanical failures, <clears throat> failures. But there are instances where those backup generators can be affected by the um, by the natural disaster itself. So I'll give you an example here in Texas, uh, where parts of the state are subject to flooding due to excessive rain. It's common at times that this flooding happens. Stationary backup gen sets become underwater and rendered inoperable. So having a rental generator backup can be placed on a higher ground with the length of cable. Some essentially becomes the backup to your backup. Okay. A backup to a backup. Got it. So last month, um, I did a podcast and we talked about energy storage systems. Are we seeing energy storage systems being a vital option <clears throat> um, in disaster planning? Yeah. Uh, battery storage systems, they're, they're really playing a pivotal role in the development of a uh, a more modern, sustainable, and resilient power grid. They're definitely more or effective and effective source of providing critical grid support, including um, peaking capacity, stabilization services, uh, renewable energy integration. I expect when engineered properly, a, a battery storage so uh, solution could definitely be a viable option in uh, disaster planning. Chris, we're almost at time. I imagine when a storm is coming, everyone is looking at mobile power and everyone wants the same product. Does availability become an issue? Yeah, absolutely. Availability, it's always becomes an issue. That's why uh, you need a power plan in place to secure the equipment. Uh, you need to know that availability is secured prior to, um, prior to the event happening. Uh, the, the power of the cat dealer network actually is that they can be relied upon to pull together a collective global fleet to help our customers out in times of need. So no matter where in the world CAD is asked to help, we're there. Thank you for joining us on Power Bites. I think you have given our listeners a lot to think about when it comes to disaster power planning, like availability, the cost benefits of having a backup to a backup plan. Is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, well, you know, I, I appreciate being invited to talk about rental power. Obviously, it's something I'm passionate about. And Always enjoy the opportunity to uh, to speak as a as a added to the conversation. Uh, you know, in today's world, there's uh, aging power grid infrastructures, so backup power plays a critical role in recovery from all manner of disasters, uh, natural or otherwise. So, having a contingency uh, contingency plan in place is, uh, I think, a, a key first step to get our customers operations back up and keeping businesses um, functioning when they're needed the most. Thank you so much for listening today. If you have any feedback, reach out to us via email at powerbytes at cat.com. That's power, B-Y-T-E-S, at cat.com. We'd love to hear your feedback on today's podcast or ideas for future podcasts.